What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with a question a lot of you guys ask. A line TB60 or the SAB Raw 580. So we have both models here on the table and we're going to go over both of them, my pros and cons to both of them and which one you should choose. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. We are going to start with the TB60 first. So we are going to start at our head and work our way down. So, of course, you have a fully aluminum CNC'd head with a 8 millimeter feathering shaft, aluminum blade grip arms, moving down to a aluminum head block with a 10 millimeter main shaft, a traditional FBL style head with your Fowler arms, plastic linkages all the way around, fully adjustable turnbuckles so you can get your pitch and everything dialed in, fully aluminum swash plate, you have a Plastic centered anti-rotation bracket with an aluminum outside. Moving our way to 600 millimeter main carbon fiber main blades that come stock in the kit. Moving down to the fiberglass canopy with your motor sticking out the top here. Now this I added that does not come with it, but you have a Align Dominator RCM BL 750X 930 KV. It is a 4236 motor. This is a 6S setup. Moving down, we have two and a half millimeter frame sides, carbon fiber frame sides, top and bottom. And then you have your very thick white plastic skids and your aluminum skid pipes. The canopy has a push lock on both sides to release it here. And then you just slide your canopy out and there is a little plastic tongue to hold the front of the canopy. The canopy itself has a nice color to it, a nice paint job. It is very visible in the air, a big upgrade on the paint scheme compared to the traditional Align canopies. But like all Align canopies, it is very thin and flimsy. And even though it is black to look like carbon fiber on the inside, this is a fiberglass canopy and you do run the risk of chipping it every time you take it on and off. That's why this frame protection is very good. And you also run the risk of cracking it as you take the canopy on and off. So just be very careful with your canopy. Now with the canopy off, we can go down to our servos and work our way down. This model does use full size Align BL DS830M servos. So these are full metal geared digital servos that are brushless. They're 15, 20 all the way around, including the tail servo. You have, of course, your 10 millimeter main shaft that goes down to your block and your main mother plate that is all aluminum. And that goes down to this main gear here that drives a secondary gear, which runs to your motor belt. So you have a pulley down inside of there that runs to your motor. And then your tail belt attaches to that same little bearing stack that has your gears inside of here. This gear is a wearable item. So it is cheap and expensive and easy to change. You get two of them. So just keep an eye on that every hundred or so flights. Again, two and a half millimeter frame sides, upper and lowers. The lowers are sacrificial. So they are designed to break in the event of a crash. Moving forward, we have a Hobbywing 150 amp ESC. 6S setup again. We are running RC Pro S7 connectors. Carbon fiber ESC mount. We have an aluminum motor mount, belt driven, of course, from the motor to the main bearing stack, and then your gear, and then belt driven to the tail. Now, working our way back, the servo layout is a little bit untraditional. You got your servos laid flat. Again, adjustable turnbuckles from the servo to the swash plate. A carbon fiber FBL mount that gets sandwiched in between your two frame sides. This is a very simple build. Of course, our tail servo tucked up into the frame side right here. Nice and hidden. Carbon fiber tail push rod with pre-glued aluminum ends. This is a traditional, a non-traditional for a line belt driven tail. This is a 30 millimeter tail boom. And this is a little tensioning block that goes through. There is a screw on each side that you can push the block in. You have aluminum bearing or boom block in the front and a plastic boom block with a tensioner for your belt. Moving our way back, we have a center push rod guide on the tail boom itself. Now on to the tail casing. The tail casing is off of the TB70. So you have a massive tail casing, again, belt driven tail, carbon fiber tail fin that is very stiff with a white plastic border going all the way around it. And it just screws in with two screws on the outside. You have a very simplistic, your tail shaft 
is six millimeters. So you have a very beefy tail shaft, aluminum blade grips. This is a dampened tail. So you have dampeners and thrust bearings inside of here. This is a single sided arm here. So your pitch slider is down to a single sided aluminum arm, plastic pitch slider, plastic links, but going to a aluminum tail and tail grips with carbon fiber tail blades that are 95 millimeters. Now the battery tray on this model included is a carbon fiber battery tray with a latch mechanism that is down under here. So it is a slide in style with plastic rails to slide in and out. I am running a 6S 6200 milliamp battery on this model. I feel it flies great. And on this one, it just slides right in very easily all the way till it locks and that battery is into place. CG's out perfectly. Anytime you wanna change your battery, you just lift up on this little tab that's right here and slide your battery right back out. You can change trays, throw a new battery on it and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the RAW 580. On the SAB RAW 580, we're gonna start at the head and work our way down. We have, of course, a fully aluminum head, blade grips and head block, eight millimeter feathering shaft, thrust bearings on both sides. You have your aluminum arms on the side here with a single screw, so ease of maintenance. And then you work your way down to our adjustable turnbuckle style linkages, traditional FBL head with our washout Fowler arms here with plastic links going down to our fully aluminum swash plate. Our anti-rotation bracket is a full aluminum bracket with our pen going down. Now the canopy on this model is fully carbon fiber, so it is very strong and very stiff. Just like the TB60, you have a push lock on both sides that will allow you to release your canopy and you have a tongue down at the bottom. Canopy slides off very nice and neatly. Canopy on all SAB models are very stiff, quality canopy. They don't crack from taking it on and off. This model has over a thousand flights on it. Canopy is still original, 100% carbon fiber. We can set the canopy aside. We're going to move on to our motor. We are running a X Nova 4025 1Y 1120 kV. Again, this is a 6S helicopter, just like the TB60. Going down, we have a 10 millimeter main shaft, aluminum swash plate, adjustable plastic ends on both sides for our links going from the servo to the swash plate. This model is running mini servos for cyclic. That is just my preference. You can get full size mounts, but we have minis on cyclic, all three, and a full size on tail, which is down here. We have a transmission style assembly here. So everything is done. All of our gears are all done in the transmission, very neat and easy of maintenance. And we have aluminum servo mounts top and in the back is all aluminum. Moving down to a aluminum bottom plate that is part of the transmission assembly. And then we have a aluminum motor mount. We are running to a single main pulley, so no gears and, and reduction pulleys to our motor mount pulley, which is all belt driven. A tail pulley down here to our tail belt going to the boom. You have a carbon fiber FBL plate on a aluminum mount that again ties to your, FB, your canopy mounts, which are carbon fiber plates with cups. The upper frame sides on the RAW 580 are two millimeter and the lower frame sides are 1.6 millimeter. They are sacrificial as well. So in a crash, you can break the lowers and you don't have to worry about nothing else. Very durable white one piece main skids here with our skid pipes, plastic front canopy tongue, bolts onto the bottom. We are running a Hobby Wing 120 on this model, carbon fiber ESC tray with a very thick plastic mount here. So that is designed to break. Aluminum side rails for the battery tray with a carbon fiber tongue and center brace here. Working our way back, we have a 30 millimeter tail boom. Our tail servo tucked down inside of there on a aluminum tail mount. Tail servo mount, we have aluminum boom blocks, front and rear, as well as our pulleys down in here. Our tensioner system is right here. We have our center clamp to our carbon fiber tail push rod, working our way back to our carbon fiber tail fin that is very thick. We are running, of course, a aluminum pulley, belt driven tail, aluminum tail casing, five millimeter tail shaft, so it's a millimeter smaller than on the TB60 a dampened tail system, aluminum blade grips, 96 millimeter tail blades, a slider. Again, this is a plastic bodied slider with a aluminum mount coming out of the tail casing. And it is a single sided, just like on the TB60. So you have one point here, 
aluminum going into plastic linkages. This is a 6S 5000 that I'm flying on a 3D printed battery tray that I made, but the kit comes with a plastic battery tray. Again, you have aluminum side rails. So this model, the battery just slides right into here. Your battery tab lifts up, slide it into place till it locks. Battery is in there, not going anywhere. You have screws back here to stop the battery from sliding back. When you are ready to swap batteries, you just lift up on that carbon fiber tab, slide forward, and your battery is out. So I got the RAW 580 and TB60 lined up here on the bench. Tried to get main shaft to main shaft so we can kind of see the differences in the similarities of both of these models. So TB60 is in the back and RAW 580 is in the front. Now, of course, this is a 580 millimeter blade, but you can put 600s on it. And this is a full 600 millimeter blade. So if you look here, of course, blades are longer. And if we work our way to the back, you can kind of tell that the TB60 tail sits a little farther back, but again, both models, this model could be made a 600 just by changing your blades and your gearing. Now, pros and cons and differences of these models. Both helicopters are fantastic. The RAW 580 is my favorite helicopter ever made. Absolutely love this thing. The TB60 is quickly becoming my secondary almost daily flyer. Both of these models are great. You can't go wrong with either one. It comes down to a personal preference. Now, we all know that the TB60 has a lot of things taken from the RAW 580, especially when you're looking at them side by side. They look pretty similar. Same basic design. But with that being said, the TB60 is a great deal, a great price point for you to get everything you need in the box. The RAW 580 is going to cost you slightly more, not a huge difference in price, but where the price differences come in is crash cost. Align models are a lot cheaper to repair than SAB models, but to me, nothing beats an SAB helicopter, but Align is a great second choice. So depending on your preferences, what you want, these are two fantastic models. Now wait, the weight on the RAW 580 without a battery is 2,630 grams or five pounds and 13 ounces. The weight on the TB60, again, without a battery, but canopy, is 2,874 grams or six pounds, five and a half ounces. So the RAW 580 is a little lighter, but that has a lot to do with the different sizes of motors, even though that's a 42. This motor X Nova is a lot lighter. We are running mini servos on this model that has full size servos. Frame sides are a little thinner. That has a little thicker frame sides. There's a lot less parts in the RAW 580. The TB60 has a lot more gears and shavs over there. So little differences to them, but I don't think you guys can go wrong with either helicopter. So there you guys go. A bench comparison of the Align TB60 and the SAB RAW 580. Now my pros and cons. Start with the TB60 here. Great model. The canopy is really annoying that it's so thin and a line can't get that right. If a line could get the canopy better, this helicopter would be so much nicer. My other issue is that plastic main gear. I've already gone through one. This is my second one. This helicopter doesn't have a lot of flights on it. SAB RAW 580. It's hard for me to have anything wrong with it. I think the RAW 580 is great. I don't have an issue with it. I've never had a single issue with it. It's got well over a thousand flights on it and it has, it's all original. The only thing I've done is replace the dampeners in the head, the tail, and that's it. Everything else is still the way it was. It's a fantastic helicopter. You can't go wrong with SAB. A line you can't go wrong with either. They're both great machines. Really anything on today's market is a fantastic helicopter and I don't have any doubts with either one of them. My only other complaint on the TB60 is the tail belt tensioning design. It's really hard to get the TB60 to design to tension properly. It's very tricky, but that's my only other issue with it. Other than that, super good build, super great flying helicopter, performs like it should, great power to weight ratio, and it is a great price. Raw 580, it's an SAB. You can't go wrong with SAB. Good pricing, fantastic flyers, and it will last forever. So I hope this answered some of your guys' questions on which TB60 or RAW 580 you should get. The answer is either one of them. They are both fantastic machines. 
So I hope you liked this video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Remember, Patreon and PayPal are linked in every video description if you'd like to help support me. Take care and have a great day.